Is your computer too fast? Do you have too much screen real estate? Are you overwhelmed by the amount of power at your fingertips from your desktop PC? Well, then a netbook might just be for you. All right, so let's be honest. This isn't really a netbook in the traditional sense, and it's not really a netbook at all, but it is in a netbook form factor. Today we have the ASUS UX305, one of the newest laptops from ASUS, and as you can see, it's making a pretty significant argument for the return of the netbook form factor. Well, why are we talking about that? Well, if you recall, about 10 years ago, uh, a horrible idea came out to the market that computers didn't need to be as fast as they were, and we didn't need as much power, storage space, or anything that made a computer great in our computers, and the netbook was born. If you were unfortunate enough to own or to use a netbook in their prime, you'll recognize that some of the biggest flaws are the lack of speed, the tiny form factor that made it very inconvenient for doing just about anything. The keyboards were even too small to type on. Additionally, they had a very limited usability for a lot of applications and programs that we'd become accustomed to. Well, fast forward a number of years and now, Suddenly, we've come to a point where it actually makes sense to have a smaller form factor because we have enough power packed into a device such as this. So let's jump into why companies are going in this direction. Many of you will notice uh, if you go to Apple's website or if you've heard anything about Apple that they're coming out with a new MacBook. Their new MacBook is a complete abandonment of all things performance. They've openly admitted that their MacBooks are not going to be the top of the line type of video editing machines that they used to be. So we're looking at a, at a revolution where people want more simplicity, they want less power in their computers because they, they found that they don't really need to be, you know, running Adobe Premiere or whatever the case may be all the time on these laptops. So it actually makes quite a bit of sense to return to that type of a form factor and sacrifice some of the power as a result. What ASUS has done is they've created a direct competitor with the new MacBooks and they brought it to market slightly earlier. Now, you'll notice a few things that are actually quite striking about this laptop right from the get-go. First off, it's incredibly thin, even when closed. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we're looking at under an inch in uh, actual thickness here. As you can see, the actual USB port really doesn't have a whole lot of clearance on either side. So they've done as much as they can to limit the actual size of the laptop while still maintaining a pretty durable feel to it. It has uh, an aluminum top to it, or at least uh, a faux aluminum, as it were. And <clears throat> really, honestly, it feels like it's very nice build quality. In this particular model, the UX305, we have a 1080p screen. Uh, ASUS has announced that they will be releasing a Quad HD screen as well as a touch screen option for that Quad HD screen. Now you can expect a lot uh, less battery life from something of that nature because it's going to draw a lot just to keep the screen powered. However, in its current form, we're looking at actually a pretty good battery life and the specs really aren't too bad. The laptop itself is surprisingly light. It's 1.2 kilograms or two and a half pounds or just over two and a half pounds if you want to use real measurements. And uh, again, it really doesn't lack in its quality feeling. It, it really does feel solid. It doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hand like a lot of those old netbooks used to feel. From the get-go, this is running Windows 8.1, uh, and it does have a free upgrade to Windows 10, as does every computer that runs Windows 8, 8.1, even Windows 7. They're all going to have a free upgrade to Windows 10 in the first year of usage. It has a 512 uh, gigabyte solid state drive. It actually has a very fast solid, solid state drive as well. It's not uh, one of the typical crappy ones they put in a lot of these stock laptops. So it's actually a pretty quick, uh, quick little guy. It has eight gigabytes of RAM so that you can multitask really efficiently, which is nice, especially with a lot of the, uh, the ultra books and, and things of that nature. A lot of them had smaller amounts of RAM. So this is giving you the benefit there as well. It comes with three USB 3.0 ports, which is nice and a huge improvement over what Apple is providing with one that you use for charging. The included wireless card is a wireless AC card. So again, you're gonna get some of the newest technology in the wireless world, uh, connectivity that's quite a lot faster than wireless N or anything before it. And additionally, you're gonna have quite a bit more range. This is a 13.3 inch screen 
and uh, it is an IPS screen. So it actually looks quite nice, uh, very good viewing angles. The vertical angles are good as well. It's not gonna be quite as good as a desktop IPS panel because again, you're not really getting quite the same feel as an overall monitor, but it really does look nice and especially for the cost. Let's talk about the cost because that's actually one of the biggest benefits of this laptop as opposed to most other laptops that are out there on the market right now. You're looking at a cost as far as the base model is concerned at $699. That is cheaper than most Ultrabooks, and it's gonna be cheaper than pretty much anything in Apple's wheelhouse that is supposed to compete with this laptop directly. So really, really a great price, especially for the market that this is going after. Well, who is that market? Well, typically with netbooks or smaller form factors, you're looking at students and working professionals. This is not gonna run, you know, Battlefield 4, it's not going to be the number one, you know, Witcher 3 machine. It's, it's not going to even run those games. It's not going to really be a gaming machine. That's not what it's built for. It's built for somebody that's going off to college, going to school, or that is a working professional, needs to be able to have something they can take on a plane, and it's light, easy, carries a good charge. And uh, this is exactly what that is, which is why it's so cheap, and really it's a pretty solid product in that respect. To bring all of that to a head, you're looking at an eight to 10 hour battery life on this laptop. So for its uses, again, really honestly, it might be the best value there is out there for a student or somebody that's looking for a cheap laptop they can take with them. Now, when you get a laptop that's that cheap, it does have a lot of great things about it. It's fast, it's snappy, but there's also quite a bit of negatives. So let's talk about where the shortfalls, where the corners have been cut, so to speak, to make sure that this is actually affordable. We're only going to be reviewing the Game 1 headset, and in our estimation... An That's the sound the speakers make at the max instances. volume. Obviously the open back headsets are going it's to very crappy. So why is it so hard to hear from these speakers? Well, go ahead and try and find them. They're not anywhere up here where speakers should be for you to hear them when you're looking at this portion. Um, they're down here. Uh, on this side right here, there's a tiny little one. And uh, over here, you got another tiny little one. So uh, the speakers project the sound outwards and into the table so you can hear really well when you're listening to them. The other issue is a lot of times when you're a student or a working professional that's gonna be taking this on flights or into classrooms and lecture rooms, the lights aren't going to be on, and uh, we still have the lights on, but I want to show something to you. This keyboard is not illuminated, and actually the keys are not a pure white top, so you actually can't see them very well, even if it is kind of decently lit like it is right now. It's more of a gray tone. When it's really dark, <laughs> you're, you're kind of screwed. You're going to have to rely on the screen light to give you light to your keyboard, which again, isn't gonna be a whole lot because it's not really the brightest screen in the world. And especially when you're in a dark area, you probably don't wanna turn your brightness up anyway. So really, honestly, kind of a major drawback here that you don't have a backlit keyboard, especially considering that it's not really all that expensive to add that in. So keep that in mind. It's not gonna be very visible. The other, not really major, but pretty big drawback of the Asus ZenBook is that the trackpad really isn't all that nice. It is a nice trackpad, it does recognize gestures, but it's not technically a precision trackpad as defined by Windows. Let's show you a precision trackpad on the Surface, the Surface Pro, excuse me, and a regular trackpad on the Asus. Brock is gonna show us the difference between the two trackpads with his really long hands. And uh, as you can see on the Asus, it's really not the most responsive in the world, but it is nice. They're leaning towards the newer features that Windows 10 will have. But again, once Windows 10 comes out in a few months, this is going to be essentially worthless because you'll have the better functionality from Windows 10. As you can see, Windows 10 has it very flawless, seamless. The trackpad is responsive on the surface where it's really not all that responsive. And you can feel some noticeable input lag on the Asus UX305. Uh, which is really a disappointment because typically Asus does a pretty good job with their trackpads and I don't really know why this is so noticeably laggy in comparison to what they previously put out.
Another point to make with Asus and their trackpad is that they use their own software suite to run their trackpad, which again, the implementation isn't really all that great. While conceptually it is a good idea, it just kind of looks buggy. It doesn't really open when you click on it for 10, 20, 30 seconds, depending on the mood of the laptop. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. So something a lot more integrated would have been a better solution. Um, which is why Windows 10 is going to have a lot of these features built in, which will be a welcome change because it will get rid of the hassle of dealing with their crappy software. The ASUS ZenBook comes with a new Core M processor from Intel. It's the 5Y10 processor. Uh, really, it's kind of tough to tell now how quick processors are just by looking at their model numbers, at least from Intel, because they're updating and changing their different uh, models and their different specifications. One huge benefit of this processor is it's about as fast as, an, as a Core i5 uh, a 4200U, which is a, an Ultrabook model processor, and actually a pretty quick processor. Very similar specs. It's going to be slightly slower, uh, but it does have the benefit of lower power consumption, and it's completely fanless. Now, we've talked a lot about the performance the price point, and really honestly, the overall pretty solid value and quality you're getting from this ZenBook. But the question is, does it do enough to beat out most of the competition? Well, Microsoft has the brand new Surface 3, and it has a faster processor, more comparable to probably an i5-3317U, another Ultrabook model, but substantially faster. You're also gonna get the benefit of working with a Surface that when you have the keyboard, you have the touch pen, you have everything combined, it really is a pretty neat experience. You have the backlit keyboard, you have a touch screen that's really pretty close to flawless, and the overall design of the Surface, it's practically indestructible. So a great quality option is that Surface 3, and really honestly, for the same price, $699, you can get the keyboard, you can get the touch pen, you can even get a little docking station and uh, gives you a little bit extra room for throwing in some extra stuff on the side. Now, one of the, one of the lower points of the Surface is that it has less RAM and it has about a quarter the amount of uh, hard drive space, even on the higher end. So you are getting some definite benefits with the, with the ZenBook. And again, for a working professional who needs to store more files, who needs to multitask more, and who wants something that's easily light and portable and carries a good battery life without any of the bells and whistles, it's exactly what the ZenBook does. So is it sexy? No. No, it's not sexy. It's decidedly not sexy. But it is actually a very nice laptop, and it's actually been a pleasure getting to know it, getting to use it a little bit, and uh, I think we can definitely give it our recommendation for a solid purchase. Again, if you're looking for something that's cheap and easy and is going to get the job done, I mean, even a Mother's Day or Father's Day gift, this thing really does work exceptionally well and I think it's honestly one of the better laptops to come out in recent years. Um, again, kind of a return to the older form factors, but that may be a good thing because we really are more mobile than we used to be, and it makes sense when you have a full functioning operating system backing up that smaller form factor. Thanks for joining us guys for our review of the ASUS ZenBook UX305. Uh, again, really can easily recommend this laptop to anybody that's looking for something that's nice, portable, and cheap. Uh, it really checks all those boxes quite nicely and probably better than most other things that are out there. Make sure to click that subscribe button. If you like the video, go ahead and like it with a thumbs up there. Leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns about the laptop or anything else that we've discussed, and uh, leave us some suggestions for other videos you'd like us to do, uh, different things you'd like us to cover, and uh, we'll be more than happy to explore that. Make sure to check back for more unboxings, reviews, and tech-related videos. If you want to purchase this laptop, which again, we do definitely recommend it if you are in that demographic that we mentioned, you can go ahead and click the link in the description for an Amazon uh, affiliate link to purchase the laptop. If you decide to go with a different product, you can also use that same affiliate link and it goes directly towards supporting us, allowing us to do continued videos like this because we love you. And uh, we definitely want that support so we can continue to make these things a reality. Thanks again for watching. We are Gus Tech. We'll see you next time. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>